because because his one of his missions is accomplished to kill, to steal, and destroy. That's his job description, and he wants to rip you off in life. Yeah. And the way the enemy rips us off in life is he helps develop strongholds in our mind that keep us from God's That's best. That's it. That's good. And so be aware of that. Man. Be aware of that. Don't let the enemy rip you off. Get a little fired up. When you see him ripping you off, there's got to be something rises up in you where you want to fight back. Mm-hmm. You want to be a little fighting. And uh, so today's uh, message, I had a great time last week. I, I think I'll have a good time this week. We'll, we'll see. I, think, I know I will. Um, and I'm going st- to stay on the wall part two. And we're in the story of Nehemiah. And there was a, Nehemiah was on the wall. He was building something. And these enemies wanted him to come down off the wall to stop the building that was happening. And it was called the Plain of Ono, which I think is just classic. <laughs> and so my message series, or my message today is No Mo to Ono. How do you like that? No Mo Ono. How do you like that? Not bad, huh? Come on. I worked hard on that. <laughs> Another thought was don't go Yoko to Ono. I mean, we went through some things. <laughs> I know I'm absurd. But um, the, the idea is this. Nehemiah, just to review, I'm going to review some things. Let me go to my notes here because I want to do this systematically a bit. Nehemiah was a cupbearer for the king, had no resources, was in servitude. So he went to the king Artaxerxes. And what, what he did, he got a report about the walls of Jerusalem. And they were destroyed by fire and knocked down in sad condition. The walls of Jerusalem, the walls of any city represented their protection. When they were down, the enemy could go in and literally do whatever they wanted, steal the people's resources. There was no barrier there to prevent that from happening. It was like a mockery. It was like the city that's really not a city. It's an open sin to the attack of the enemy. And so, and so Nehemiah was in this situation. He got a report of the condition of the wall. And he decided to do something about it. He asked the king for, for not only his freedom, but he asked the king for resources, time, material, to actually rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. And he had favor with the king. He prayed a prayer for favor. He got favor. Everyone say favor. Favor. See, favor will allow you to rise up above what your current resources uh, would say that you could do. So you might be in a situation where you say, I can't get educated further. Um, as far as I can go on my job, I want to encourage you to look beyond your resources and look to the favor of God. Yeah. Yeah. Look to the favor of God and yeah. see what opportunities He opens up. Be aware of God's favor. Don't say it is what it is. The economy does not limit you as much as your own thinking does. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's you right. understand God? Come on, Bobby. Bobby, you know that. Bobby, Bobby knows about favor. Bobby believes for favor in his life. He's been a great resource to the church for years. Bobby is this. What an awesome family. But open yourself up for that. Believe God for prosperity. Don't buy this line, oh, you're not one of those prosperity preachers, are you? I know people have gone excess and haywire with that stuff. But the Bible talks about prosperity. It says God delights in the prosperity yes. of your servants. Yes. So biblical prosperity is what we're after. And that, that, that entails all kinds of things, uh, financial uh, your emotions and everything else. It, the word for prosperity in Greek it means your well-being. And your father is into yes. your well-being. That's right. That's good. He's your father. He wants you to do well in life. So here Nehemiah was, a broken down wall. But here's the interesting thing. That wall had been in that condition for 150 years when Nehemiah started on that project. Now, if you read the text, it just seems like it was a new development. But actually, Nebuchadnezzar had been the one that had destroyed the wall and knocked it down. So for 150 years, three generations sat and watched a broken down wall and didn't do a thing about it. Oh, man. I feel Jesus. (laughs) I feel that constantly. Anyway, so so here's what. Here's what. Here's the deal. Will we be a generation that stands, stares, and looks at a broken down wall Or will we be a generation that rises up and says, I'm going to do something about that broken down wall. I'm not going to tolerate that condition. 
in our lives? That's the question. Yes. So, so here's the deal. We've got to get up on the wall. Someone, I need some people to get up on the wall, and I need someone to hand me another brick, baby. Because yeah. I don't want to sit and watch a broken down condition. The church, the, this country, I want to do something yeah. about Come the on. messed up, yeah. jacked up condition yeah. of this country. And it starts one life at a time, one family at a time. If I can get me right, I have the authority to influence other people. If I can't get me right, it's got to start with me. I can't make other people right when I'm jacked up. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Amen. That doesn't mean God's grace isn't there. It's just, hey, let's get your, our lives in the world. We, and here's what I'm saying. We can't complain. This country's so in debt, and we're in debt too. Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. Where we have, you know, we've got to work that out in our own life. Then we'll have the moral authority to speak to our governing officials, and we will put government people in there that believe in actually paying your bill. Yeah, yeah. And we'll have the authority to do that because we yeah, yeah. have worked on our own world and made that right. Yeah, yeah. See, I, we can't be theoretical leaders. Leaders who say, you know, we really should, we really should, we really should, and don't have yeah, that in our own on, lives. I don't have, when I tell you to do something that I am not doing in my life, there's no power yeah. in it. Yeah, that's but it. when I tell you to give, and I'm a giver, there's power in it, there's life experience, there's strength in it, because I'm living that in my own life. And there's something that happens when we just, come on, somebody get up and hand me another brick or yeah. get up on the wall. Somebody build something. Don't just complain and get depressed about the condition yeah. of the world. Yes. Get up and do something yeah. about it. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen? amen. Man, is that the glory or spawn machine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it's the glory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... So I'm excited about this. I'm excited about thinking about this. So I want to give you a couple points in the sixth chapter. We'll read. Um, Katie, I didn't ask you to put that up there. But if you have that from last week, and I'll read from the, from the Bible. I'll just read from my Bible. That would be a good idea. Yeah, there you go. Overhead. Now, when I read from the overhead, that is in the Bible. <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, so... Um, Nehemiah, the sixth, the sixth chapter, watch this. When the word of the when the word came to Samuel out to buy a guest from the Arab and the rest of our members that I rebuilt the wall and not a gap was left in it, <coughs> though up to that time I had not set the doors and the gates, Samuel out and Geshem sent me this message. Come, let us meet together in one of the villages of the plain of Ono. I made the point last week, when you actually make progress, that's when the enemy is concerned yeah, about that's you. Right. He's not concerned about you if you're bumping the log and you're just not doing anything. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to put people down, but God's okay. No, I'm sorry. The enemy's okay with your inactivity. He likes you to be inactive. If you're a Christian and you don't do anything, don't say anything, don't press the issue on anything, and you're inactive, he's okay with that. But when you start to make progress in your life, an alarm sounds off in hell. Yeah, that's right. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Will and Jenna, keep an eye on them. Keep an eye on them. Send something against them because they're going to be an impact in family, the body of Christ. If we don't do something, in other words, you get the enemy's attention. Isn't it interesting when you think about I do, I'm on so many tangents I'm going off of, but I think these are, these may be spirit led rabbit trails. Isn't it interesting to see uh, there's a scripture in, in the book of Acts where there's these individuals, the seven sons of Sceva, they're called that actually tried to cast out a devil. Yeah, yeah. And, and they said, by the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, or they said something like that. In other words, they didn't personally know Christ. Right, the right. experience of deliverance what is, was not in their life, yet they tried to do the same thing as Paul. And hell gave them an answer. Yeah. <laughs> and here's what hell said. This is so interesting. Jesus, we know. Oh, we know him. He causes more problems than anyone else. And Paul, we know. Hell knew Paul. Yeah. But then it said this. But who are you? Yeah. <laughs> and literally, these demonic powers just beat physically. I mean, I know this is strange for us in this world, but physically beat the tar out of these guys through these other other individuals. Demonic manifestation, these other individuals attack and beat them up. Anyway, so 
But I just thought it was interesting that hell knew Paul. Yes. Listen, yeah. we, we need to be known in hell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If we're doing something, hell <laughs> will hear from it. Yeah. Hell will know us. I want to be known in hell as someone who gave them. No, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Some, did I say that? Can I say it? Just say it. You just say hell. I want to be known in hell as someone who gave the demonic powers hell. Yeah. I want to be Amen. known in hell. I, did I? I got this fresh, hot off the press. Anyways, <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah. Anyway, so we want to be known. Don't we like church? We, don't want, we want to be known in hell. We want to actually do some damage. We want to actually bring people to Christ. We want to make impact. I believe if we want to be revived, we can be revived. Yeah. God's looking to revive the dreams in some of your hearts. Some of you aren't where you know you need to be, but I got good news. You can get there. You know how to get there. It involves heart. Your own personal pursuit of God makes the difference in your life. Yeah. Did I hear an amen? Amen. I'm preaching yeah. better yeah. than your amen, yeah. so yes, I still listen. Come on. Daddy, no. Let's do something. Let's build something. Let's not complain. Let's not just... See, and here's a, the greatest, one of 